Oh, good morning. This is Father Zerilli with today's Gospel Reflection on this Tuesday of the fourth week of Lent. Our Gospel comes from uh, the book of John, chapter 5. There was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, there is in Jerusalem at the Sheep Gate a pool called in, Bethesda, called in, called in Hebrew Bethesda with five porticos. In these lay a large number of ill, blind, lame, and crippled. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been ill for a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. While I am on my way, someone else gets down there before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your mat. And walk. Immediately the man became well, took up his mat, and walked. Now that day was a Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who was cured, It is the Sabbath, and it is not lawful for you to carry your mat. He answered them, The man who made me well told me, Take up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take, take it up and walk? The man who was healed did not know who it was. For Jesus had slipped away, since there was a crowd there. After this, Jesus found him in the temple area and said to him, Look, you are well. Do not sin any more, so that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went and told the Jews that Jesus was the one who had made him well. Therefore the Jews began to persecute Jesus, because he did this on a Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, what a, a nice little gospel here. You know, we've spoken uh, in the past, I have, about how, uh, you know, there are symbols and images in the scripture, um, particularly during Lent we see these, how physical blindness, for example, uh, means more than just the, the physical inability to see. It has to do with spiritual blindness, the inability to see the things of God. How, uh, same with sp spiritual thirst. Right? It means more than being thirsty for water, it means a, a spiritual thirst when we see it in Scripture for the things of God. Right, And we've seen um, in the last few weeks on Sunday, we had the, the story of the woman at the well with a physical thirst, but Jesus talked it in, into a lesson about the spiritual thirst. And we saw last Sunday about the man born blind. Again, uh, not physical blindness, but the, but the spiritual inability to see the things of God. Well, Something else is happening here. We can discern another layer of meaning beyond, uh, behind a, a physical illness to the realm of the spirit. And in this case, it's a symbol for, uh, of a spiritual illness, which is, of course, another name for sin. You know, I'm always grateful to God when someone comes to confession after having been away for a, a long time comes in, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been 30 years, uh, 40, 50 years since my last confession. Uh, you'd be surprised how often that happens. And and people say, well, Father, aren't you mad at him, right? Don't you yell at him? Why? What took you so long to get back, you know? And I said, no, don't listen, no. That's only in the movies, all right? Uh, it's just the opposite, really, right? It's, I mean, it's the power of God at work, uh, moving someone to come back after a lifetime away how the angels rejoice, Jesus tells us, uh, when one who is lost comes back home and is healed. And it's a particular moment of joy uh, for the priest uh, to be the instrument uh, through which God reconciles a sinner back to himself and to the church. Well, the paralytic, we're told, uh, sat there by the pool for 38 years until the Son of God walks up to him with that little question, do you want to be well? It may sound like a silly question to us, uh, of course, uh, he wants to be well, but uh, beyond that, uh, there's a, a, a symbolic meaning of the man's physical illness to reflect the reality of the spiritual illness of sin. And, I mean, that's the real message. Jesus didn't come to, uh, to miraculously heal a few sick people during the course of a few years in a very small geographic area. 
he came to cure the sickness of sin in all people of all times. And John is telling us in this account here that just as Jesus can heal the physical affliction of this man, so too can he heal the spiritual sickness. He can forgive sins. That's what the, the real uh, lesson that John is trying to get across to us is. You know, two kinds of people come to confession. Those who are well and those who want to be well. Uh, both are welcome. And please make sure you hear that. And, and make sure that uh, those who are away from the Lord, you know, maybe sitting idly like this man was by the pool, make sure that they hear that too. And we pray for them today, particularly those who are away from the Lord. I mean, whether one suffers from spiritual blindness or spiritual thirst or spiritual illness of sin, we pray that they will hear and act on that little question from the Lord. Do you want to be well? And what John proclaims to us today is that Jesus can make them well. Amen.